Wouldn't you notice if something seemed off about mom? They say you, who does nothing, shouldn't interfere. Siblings may be different, but how could I stay silent when our beloved mother isn't herself? And my brother tells me to stop sticking your nose in our business, even though he only sends $100 a month. Families come in various forms, and in my case, our father wasn't around. I have no recollection of him. He passed away in an accident shortly after I was born. Mom, who continued to cherish his memory, never remarried and single-handedly raised my brother and me. Undoubtedly, she faced countless challenges, yet she shielded us from any hardship, always wearing a smile. Now, as an adult, I'm determined to repay her boundless kindness in any way I can. I'm Lisa, a 43-year-old mom juggling work with raising my high school-age son. My older brother, Mike, at 45, is married without children. Our mother, now in her 70s, has retired and lives off her pension. Initially, I found solace knowing she resides with Mike and his wife as our visits are limited to Christmas holidays. From afar, it seemed they got along well, and mom enjoyed a serene retirement. However, recent societal circumstances have heightened my concerns. Unable to visit frequently, our interactions are mainly through sporadic video chats, revealing her waning energy. Despite her age, I believe she needs a checkup, but she's hesitant. Thus, I've made the decision to reach out to Mike. Mike, it's been a while. I need to discuss mom. I'm busy at the moment. Can we do this later? And he abruptly ended the call. Undeterred, I attempted to reach him again over the weekend. Hey, Mike, can we talk? It's about mom. I'm suffering from a terrible headache. Let's catch up another time. And once again, he ended the conversation hastily. If I send a text, it's simply left on read, dismissed without acknowledgement. If this pattern persists, even my patience will wear thin. If he's occupied or unwell, he could always return the call when he's free. Couldn't he? Even if he prefers not to talk, a simple reply to the text would suffice. Yet, I mustn't be overly demanding. After all, they're the ones looking after our mom. Although I'm unable to physically care for her, I contribute by sending money. Every month, I allocate $2,000 from my salary to support mom. I've never explicitly informed my brother Mike about this, though I find it hard to believe he's unaware. Perhaps it's time for a heartfelt conversation with Mike one day soon. Lost in contemplation, my train of thought was interrupted by a ringing phone. Surprisingly, it's from my sister-in-law. That's uncommon. Brenda, Mike's wife, shares his age and dedicates herself to homemaking full-time. While we don't exactly click in conversation, it's not as if we're at odds. Our communication is sparse, usually routed through Mike whenever there's anything to discuss. I answered Brenda's call with a puzzled expression, unsure of what to expect. Hey, Lisa, what's up with this month's money transfer? She blurted out, catching me off guard. It irked me how direct she could be, but her question served as a stark reminder that I had missed the usual date for the money transfer. So Mike and Brenda were indeed aware of my contribution. I mused. Simultaneously, I couldn't shake the suspicion that Brenda might be the one overseeing it all. I apologize. It slipped my mind with everything going on. I'll ensure it's transferred by this weekend. You know, you can transfer money online nowadays. We're looking after your mother, you know. It's not like we're doing this as volunteers. I don't see it that way. I'm always thankful to Mike and you, Brenda. Seriously? Just because I'm a homemaker, it's as if all the responsibility for looking after mom has been dumped on me. You two siblings are just awful Brenda's words stung with bitterness. Yet I couldn't refute them. It appeared that Mike was genuinely occupied, but from Brenda's perspective, it seemed like endless grievances as she grappled with managing everything at home while I, miles away, appeared to neglect my duties towards our mother. If you're not going to take action, at least make sure to fulfill your part. Transfer it by tomorrow. Understood? Brenda's directive was firm. Yes, I understand. I replied, feeling the call end abruptly. She had a point. Unable to contribute in any other way, ensuring my payments were punctual seemed like the least I could do. The following day, I informed my workplace that I would be tardy and hurried to the bank to arrange the transfer. 
A few days later, my mother's name flashed on my phone screen. I answered, curious that she was calling to confirm the deposit. Hey, Mom, how's everything? Lisa, dear, I hate to trouble you, but could I ask for a bit more money just this once? What? What? My mother's request left me speechless. After ending the call, I sprang into action. With my husband's approval, I requested paid leave from work. Once everything was arranged, I boarded a plane bound for my childhood home in a distant land. Mom, what's happened? I was speechless as I encountered my mother, who had come to welcome me upon my arrival home. Though difficult to discern over video calls, seeing her in person after several years, it was evident she had shed a considerable amount of weight. I know she's getting older, but her weight loss is concerning, I muttered to myself. Aren't you hungry? I inquired. I do feel hungry, but there's nothing to eat, she confessed. What? But why? Is money tight? I asked, puzzled. We're strapped for cash, so there isn't much food, she admitted. No money? Wait, Mom, have you been preparing meals? My concern deepened. No, Lisa's the one cooking. But with just a cup of noodles every night, I've naturally lost weight, my mother explained. And Lisa? Is she eating the same way? I inquired. She claims she mostly eats out and only eats at home when Mike is around, my mother replied. This doesn't make sense. She has the means to eat out, yet she allows you to have such meager meals, I remarked, feeling frustrated. Mom, if cooking is difficult, why not consider takeout? It could even be a chance for you to get out and get some fresh air, I suggested. I wish I could, but we simply can't afford it, my mother confessed sadly. You don't? What about the $2,000 I send each month? I questioned, taken aback. Well, Lisa uses it all for the monthly expenses, my mother revealed. What? What kind of expenses? I pressed. It wouldn't be fair to place all the blame on my mother. Her judgment might not be as sharp as it once was. The issue lies with my brother and his wife, she explained. What in the world are they doing? Frustrated, I decided to confront my brother and his wife when they returned home. Why are you here? Were the first words out of my sister-in-law's mouth as she walked in. It's been a while, Brenda. I hope you've been doing well, I greeted her. What's with the sudden visit? You know it's rude to just drop by, right? Brenda retorted sharply. I didn't mean to impose, but I'm here now. Where's Mike? I inquired. Just leave. You're in the way. Get out before Mike gets back, Brenda insisted impatiently. I suppose it's understandable if they're annoyed with me, but why are they so eager for me to leave? I pondered silently. Just then, my brother Mike, looking exhausted from overtime work, entered the room. Why are you here? Mike's greeting echoed Brenda's sentiment. With a wry smile, I informed them that we needed to have a discussion. What's there to talk about? Mike questioned. It's about mom, I replied. Mike, how much do you know about mom? I inquired further. What's going on with mom? Mike's concern was evident. Well, mom has been surviving on just a cup of noodles every night, I disclosed. Did you know she wasn't eating anything else? I pressed. What do you mean? Mom's only having noodles? Mike seemed startled. Um, Brenda, you're being rather loud, I interjected gently. Why does she have to sneeze every time I try to talk? And what's with those sneezes anyway? Who does she think she is? I grumbled, shooting Brenda a disapproving look, but she remained unruffled, avoiding my gaze. I'm saying mom has lost too much weight. Have you even bothered to check in on her? I demanded. Do you think I have any time between all this overtime work I've been putting in? Brenda has been the one taking care of mom instead of me during this tough economic climate. You do nothing, so stay out of it, Mike retorted defensively. But I can't stay silent with things as they are. Sure, I might not be able to be there for her physically, but I am sending money, aren't I? I countered. What happened to that money? Mike's question hung heavily in the air. You call that money? Don't act so superior over a mere hundred dollars, Mike retorted sharply. His words hung heavily in the air, sending a jolt of surprise through me. What? I exclaimed softly. 
If it were true that I was only sending $100, Mike's accusation would be justified. But that wasn't the case. What do you mean? I've been sending $2,000 every month, I countered. What? Mike's response was equally startled, punctuated by a loud noise. Brenda, suddenly standing up from her chair, interjected. Well, it's getting late. How well we call it a night. You must be exhausted, Lisa. Your presence is upsetting the family's harmony. It's best if you go home. Go home, Brenda insisted, her tone firm. But Mike intervened. Wait a minute, Brenda. Where did you put mom's bank book? He demanded. Um, I'm not sure. Weren't you the one who asked me to deposit money as soon as possible? Brenda replied, her voice wavering. Don't speak nonsense, Lisa, Brenda retorted, standing her ground against my mother and me. She let out a small gasp when Mike called her name in a low, stern voice. Mike's anger was well known in our household. He only ever got mad for valid reasons. And now, he seemed genuinely furious, finally grasping the gravity of the situation. Where is mom's bank book? Mike's voice was firm, his tone indicating no room for excuses. Um, where did I put it? Wait, wait, here it is. Brenda hastily retrieved mom's bank book as Mike's anger boiled over. Flipping through it, Mike was left speechless. There was clear as day. Brenda had been withdrawing $2,000 every month for years. Mike, you truly didn't know. I questioned, my disbelief evident. Yeah, Brenda told me she was only withdrawing $100 each month, and I took her word for it, Mike admitted. What a mess. It's a huge misunderstanding. But the real issue lies with the person who caused this confusion. Brenda, what did you do with the $1,900 after deducting the 100 from Lisa's contribution? It simply vanished, I exclaimed. How does money just disappear like that? It's absurd, Mike added, bewildered. Well, it tends to disappear pretty fast if you're gambling, Brenda confessed, her voice trailing off. Gamble? Wait, what? I interrupted, stunned by her revelation. I mean, uh, you know, spending it frivolously, like shaking off a chill. It just goes, Brenda stammered. What on earth are you talking about? I demanded, growing increasingly concerned. Lissa mentioned earlier that mom is only having a cup of noodles every day. So were you going to the casino during the day? Uh, occasionally, Brenda confessed. How often is occasionally? I pressed. I go to the casino on weekdays and buy online tickets on weekends, Brenda admitted. That's practically every day, I remarked in disbelief. I'm speechless. No wonder the money we sent her disappears so quickly. In fact, she might have used up all of Mike's earnings, aside from utilities and other essential expenses. I concluded, feeling a mixture of shock and frustration. It seems Brenda hasn't just squandered Mike's income and my contributions. The revelation led to a hazy discussion and eventually a unanimous decision to divorce. With the exception of Brenda, I added solemnly. I want a divorce, Brenda declared tearfully, but her outburst was met with stern reprimands from her parents, eventually quieting her down. Mike opted not to seek alimony, but instead requested a commitment from Brenda to repay the exact amount I had been contributing towards our mother's support. With the guidance of a lawyer, legal documents were drafted. Brenda's parents, expressing remorse, agreed to settle all financial matters, including alimony and a lump sum payment. Following this, Brenda returned home under the strict supervision of her parents. She now works tirelessly from dawn till dusk to repay the owed money, with her parents having provided the upfront payment. Mike mentioned that her parents are in regular contact with him, stating that they are instilling discipline in Brenda every day. Mike and mom have embarked on a new chapter, building a life together. As for my husband and me, we relocated when our son began college, settling halfway between my parents' home and my husband's in Ohio. Fortunately, both of us were able to transfer to branches of our companies situated in this new location. I've even scaled back my workload to offer support to Mike and mom. Despite Mike's culinary shortcomings, he's been taking time off work to ensure mom has a hearty lunch. Seeing mom's face regain its plump and gentle expression brings a sense of relief. With these thoughts in mind, 
I visit my mother today. Mom, may you live a long and healthy life, I express, hoping for her well-being.